Okay, so in this video, we will carry out the partial fraction decomposition of this given rational function. The first step is always to look at the degrees of the numerator and denominator. The degree of our numerator is 1, and it is 2 for our denominator. As 1 is strictly less than 2, we can decompose this rational function into a sum of partial fractions. Now, of course, the second step is to factor the denominator into a product of linear factors or irreducible quadratic polynomials. And it's not very hard to see that by inspection. x squared plus 3x minus 4 factors as the product of x minus 1 times x plus 4. So two linear factors. And now we can look at our partial fraction decomposition. Both exponents are 1, so each factor will give us a single partial fraction. 1 will be over x minus 1, the other over x plus 4. As both factors are linear polynomials, the numerator of each partial fraction is a single constant. So over a, oh sorry, a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 4. And now we ask, well, how do we solve for these two coefficients? The idea is to go from an equality between these two rational functions to an equality between two polynomials. Well, the idea is quite simple. All you must do is multiply both sides by the denominator here. So if you multiply this up, what happens? You'll be left on the left with the original numerator, so 2x plus 1 which will equal a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 4 times the denominator, so times x minus 1 times x plus 4. Let's see what comes out of this. If you multiply through, what are you going to have? You'll have a over x minus 1 times x minus 1 x plus 4, the x minus 1s will cancel, and you'll be left with a times x plus 4. Plus b times, well, you have 1 over x plus 4 times this, the x plus 4s will cancel, and you'll be left with b times x minus 1. And you see, by simply multiplying both sides of our rational functions, by the factor denominator, we now have an equality between two polynomials. And at this stage, there are two methods for solving the coefficients a and b. So let's see the first one. This is the simplest one when you have linear factors that do not repeat. If you think of it, the equality here is between two polynomials, so it must be true for every value of x that we can choose. The idea is, well, if we can eliminate one coefficient by choosing a value of x, then we can solve for the other coefficient independently of the other one. Well, we can easily eliminate b if we choose x to be 1, as 1 minus 1 is 0, so this term will go away. So replace x by 1 in the equation, which will give you 2 times 1, 2 plus 1, 3, equals a times 1 plus 4, 5, plus b times 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is just 0. No matter what b is, 0 times b is 0. And so you see, by choosing x to be 1, we eliminate b, and now we have a single equation where the only variable is a, and we can easily solve for a. If we divide across by 5, a is simply 3 over 5. And we can play the same game now. We can eliminate a by making this factor to be 0 if we choose x to be negative 4 now. Well, let's plug in negative 4. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, plus 1 is negative 7, equals negative 4 plus 4 is 0, 0 times a is 0. This term vanishes, plus b times negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5, so negative 5b. 
Divide both sides by negative 5, which will give you that b is 7 over 5. And we now have both coefficients. So our initial rational function is 3 over 5 over x minus 1 plus 7 over 5 over x plus 4. Now, the problem with this method is it does not always work. This will not be sufficient when either you have a repeated linear factor or an irreducible quadratic factor or possibly both. So the idea is, well, if this method fails to return the value of every coefficient, what other method can we have or can we use? And the idea is to rewrite the right-hand side, the polynomial with the coefficients, the unknown coefficients, into a canonical form of a polynomial. Therefore, regrouping the constant terms together, the linear terms together, the multiple of x squared together, and so forth. And then you'll see that we get something quite interesting. So whenever this first method fails to return the value of each coefficient, fall back on the second method. And again, it is simply to rewrite the polynomial with the coefficients in canonical form. So let's see what comes out of this. So what is the multiple of x? Well, we have a times x plus b times x. So this would be a plus b. Plus, what is our constant term? It will be 4a minus b. And this is what I mean by rewriting the polynomial into canonical form. All the constant terms together, all the multiples of x together. If there were a larger power of x's, we do the same for x squared, x cubed, and so forth. What's interesting now is we have an equality between two polynomials. This polynomial equals this polynomial. But you cannot have an equality between polynomials without every coefficient to be the same. And so the constant term of this polynomial must be the same as the constant term of this polynomial. So 4a minus b must be equal to 1. Now the linear factor, the multiple of x of this polynomial, must be the same as the multiple of x of this polynomial, as they're both equal. So a plus b must be equal to 2. And you see, by rewriting first the polynomial with the unknown coefficients, in its canonical form, and then by equating similar coefficients, so constant terms with constant term, multiple of x with multiple of x, and so forth, then we have now equations involving our unknown coefficients. And with these equations, you can then proceed to solve for the coefficients. So let me do it here. So the first equation is a plus b equals 2. The second equation is 4a minus b equals 1. And the idea is to combine both equations into one where you are left with only one variable, which then allows you to solve for it. Well, if we add both, the b and the negative b will cancel, and we'll be able to solve for a. So we'll add these two together, so we'll have a plus 4a is 5a, plus b minus b is 0. This will equal 2 plus 1, 3. And this hopefully looks familiar. 5a equals 3, as before, 5a equals 3. Divide by 5 on both sides, a as before is 3 over 5. And now that we have a, we can easily solve for b. If a plus b is 2, then b is 2 minus a. As we know a, and a is over 5, we'll rewrite 2 as 10 over 5. And 10 minus 3, of course, is 7. And so we get that b is, as before, 7 over 5. So always use this method as much as possible. If it does return all the coefficients, great, as this is the simplest method. But if this ever fails to return all the coefficients, then fall back on the second method which again implies that we want to rewrite the polynomial with the unknown coefficients in its canonical form. And as we have an equality between two polynomials, 
every coefficient must be the same. So the constant terms must be the same, the multiples of x must be the same, and so on. This will provide you with equations that will allow you to solve for individual coefficients by combining the equations appropriately. Now let's go back to our conclusion. We have decomposed 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 3x minus 4. as a sum of two partial fractions, a over x minus 1, a is 3 over 5, so 3 over 5 over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 4 and b is 7 over 5. And now let's look at what if we wanted to integrate this rational function. And you'll see that the task of integrating this function is quite easy once we have obtained its partial fraction decomposition. So if we were asked to integrate 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 3x minus 4 with respect to x, we would of course substitute the single rational function for its partial fraction decomposition. And the integration becomes quite easy at this point. The 3 over 5 is a constant multiple, so it will stay there, times, and now you integrate, once you factor this out, 1 over x minus 1, and the integral of 1 over x minus 1, of course, is the ln of x minus 1 in absolute value. Done. Plus, 7 over 5 is a constant multiple. 7 over 5, factor it out. And you'll be left then with the integral of 1 over x plus 4, which, of course, is the ln of x plus 4 in absolute value. And, of course, we add the arbitrary constant of integration. So look at how easy the integration is once we have decomposed the initial single rational function into, in this case, a sum of two partial fractions. And this is the beauty of the method of partial fractions. And you can appreciate also that this is not a trivial answer. It's not clear that the antiderivative of this rational function is this linear combination of two logarithmic functions. But you can check if you want. As always, if you differentiate this function with respect to x, and you combine into a single fraction, of course you will get the original rational function. And that's it.